Hi folks, this is Dennis. And today we're going to take a look at this little flashlight that I bought at Costco probably five or six years ago. It was a part of a multi-pack. It's called a Tech Light Lumen Master, but it really doesn't matter what it's called because the important thing is that this flashlight has a little problem that we're going to address. And we're going to address it and also kind of change the technology that actually runs that battery. So what's the problem? Well, you see it it does light up but then it runs on these three uh, AAA batteries that are held in a battery holder and I'll show you what the problem is you commonly find this in battery or flashlights of this size these little battery holders it uses three AAA's and if you take it apart as if you're going to recharge the batteries you'll be able to figure out that it's actually putting these three batteries in series as opposed to running them in parallel. And the net effect of doing that, that when you put these batteries in, um, in series, it adds up the voltage of them all to achieve the voltage to run the flashlight. So in this case, I'm using uh, Antelope batteries. They're about 1.2 volts nominal uh, on their voltage. Uh, in the AAA size and that compares to about 1.5 volts that you find for a typical alkaline cell AAA. So added together these run at 3.6 volts to power the flashlight and if I were to put in the alkaline AAAs they would be adding up to 4.5 volts so this flashlight with an LED in it can run on voltage that is at least between one point or between 3.6 and four and a half volts, which is the you know three times the uh, the voltage of the AAA cell, and the capacity of it though doesn't change. It doesn't add up the capacity. So if these are at 550 uh, milliamp hours a piece, then the whole battery pack still only has 550 milliamp hours when they're running in series like this. Now what's the problem? Well the problem here is that over time you you know you saw the difficulty in removing those batteries for recharging them. Well it's developed a little crack in here and so it's probably getting close to failing and the bottom coming off completely. But it's a good flashlight and I'd kind of like to save it and keep on using it but I've never been impressed with this uh, triple battery holder like this. So my thought was, what, what else can I do uh, that would make this a functional flashlight and allow me to keep on using it, but then also still have the capability of, a, of using it um, to have, uh, you know, for, for backup, I could, you know, keep it in the house and, and keep it stored, but still have some good um, power and capacity left on it when I do need it. And so the idea that I struck upon is well what if I used a larger double A cell well the problem with that is that the voltage is too low because it's not adding up to 3.6 volts at least which we know powers the flashlight so a normal double A battery isn't going to provide the voltage that we need but what's close to that uh, and really right on target is a lithium ion rechargeable battery and in this case what I've got here is an Orbtronic 840 milliamp hour uh, battery and that's lithium ion it's rechargeable and what's uh, interesting to note of course uh, if you do a little research on lithium ion batteries you can also discover that they're very dangerous I mean we've seen those uh, hoverboard uh, skateboard type things that are bursting into flames this one is a protected cell which means that the end of it has had a little circuit added to it that prevents it from overcharging or also undercharging because with a lithium ion cell if you um, drop the, the charge down too low it may not function at all and it may not be recoverable so as opposed to a unprotected cell that's just a bare battery that requires a charging circuit to uh, keep it from overcharging or undercharging this one has the protection circuit built into it made by Orbtronic I think I paid seven dollars and ninety nine cents for each battery uh, mail order uh, to my house. And it's a really high capacity battery. 
I have two of these actually and I tested them on my battery tester. One uh, tested out at 822 milliamp hours and the other one tested out at actually 854 milliamp hours uh, of nominal capacity at 3.7 volts. The problem though then is that this, you know, you can tell it just, you know, if, if you drop it in, it's going to be too loose. So I had to come up with something to put around that. Well, the size of this is very close to the diameter of a half inch PVC pipe. This is a piece of Schedule 40 PVC and it has a very thick wall on here made for carrying water. Got this at, at Lowe's. You can find it at Home Depot too. And I just cut off the right length of this to fit in here as a sleeve. And you see it takes up quite a bit of space in there. And then that allows me to drop in this uh, roughly double A size, very, very close. Orbtronic 14500 is the battery size, 14500 battery size, and drop it in there. But it's still, if you can see there, it's still pretty far down in there. And so I've got some some space to to bridge there because it's it's still a little bit shorter than this entire gizmo here is. So I've got some space to make up. So um, if you're like me, you never throw anything away that's a nut, bolt, screw, anything like that. You have a big jar in your garage or in your workshop where you keep that stuff. And so what I did was I found a little nut. It's a, uh, looks like it's a chrome plated nut here. No, nothing real specific or fancy about it. And what I did was I just dropped that on top of the end of the, the battery cap. And uh, get it to where it sits down pretty well. Hopefully you can see that. It sits down pretty well on there. And then I just take in, take the end cap of the flashlight, screw it on, and lo and behold, it should make contact. We're going to give this a whirl, see if it works. Oh, it didn't make contact. So let's go back in. Let's check it out. Make sure we got that, that little nut in there in the right place. And sure enough, uh, it flipped upside down. Let's flip it over the other way. See if that works better. Trial and error. One of the greatest scientific endeavors ever. Oh, and we're starting to get some light on the tail cap. Get a little flash of the red light there that shows that it's at least making some contact. And hey, how about that? So we've successfully converted this LED flashlight from being a three battery AAA flashlight to a single battery lithium ion 14500 cell battery that is powering this LED flashlight now. That's pretty cool, I think. And hey, it's lithium ion, still have the rechargeable capabilities. Uh, it's really nice, it's gonna last me for a good long time. And so I'm pretty happy with this. And hope you learned something. Hope that you can maybe apply this to your flashlights if, they ha if you have a similar problem or if you just wanna try out some lithium ion technology. It's a cool way to do it. Talk to you soon. Bye.